boss. You have to shoot me. I can't. Shoot me. You want to finish your mission, don't you? Then, you'll have to shoot me. <laughs> the spirit of the warrior will always be with you. Don't be sad. We'll meet again someday. Snake, are you all right? That was a close call. What the hell happened to me? You were halfway drowned at the bottom of the river. Almost crossed over to the other side. Other side? So that really was... Something on your mind, Snake? Major, was there a man in the Cobra unit called the Sorrow? Yes, I've heard of him. He was an uncanny soldier who fought alongside the boss. What kind of man was he? The Sorrow was a man with... Well, special powers. He had ESP, which was the subject of extensive research in the Soviet Union at the time. He was especially gifted as a medium. A medium? Someone who can communicate with the spirit world and evoke the spirits of the dead. In other words, he could talk to ghosts. They say he could find out what was going on in a battle by talking to dead soldiers. What about him and the boss? What was the story between them? I don't know the details. Why don't we ask Sigurd? Yo! I finished checking up on this Sorrow guy a while ago. Thought you guys already knew, though. Knew what? That he's dead. He's been dead for two years now. Died two years ago? At Salino Yarsk. You know, those cliffs you were at. And the boss is the one who did him in. The boss? Yep. Two years ago, the boss was sent by the CIA on a secret mission to Salino Yarsk. That's when she met the Sorrow, who'd gone back to the Soviet Union after the Cobras broke up at the end of the war. Except this time they were enemies. And then what? The boss killed the Sorrow herself and accomplished her mission. At least, that's what the records say. So, he was never there in the first place. He just couldn't let go of the boss. You okay, Snake? Yeah, I'm fine. It looks like it's not time for me to die yet. I sure hope not. Otherwise, the whole mission is shot. We're counting on you, pal. Roger that. Eva? Snake, you didn't call. I was worried. Are you all right? Yeah. I took a pretty freaky detour. What are you talking about? Nothing. Forget it. Let's just say I'm back. Good. But how did you escape from the sewers? I jumped into the river. From all the way up there? We're out of control. Yeah. I got carried away by the current and almost drowned. Great. That's perfect. What do you mean, that's perfect? I mean, if you ended up in the river, then I know a good spot nearby. Let's meet up there. Where is it? Keep going upstream until you get to a waterfall. A waterfall, huh? Right. Behind that waterfall, there's a cave. We'll meet in there. The cave behind the waterfall upstream. Got it. See you there.
meet you, Snake. I'm Tatiana. Here's your equipment. Eva, you could use a towel. So could you. Want some? No, thanks. <clears throat> Don't like snakes? Not for dinner. Mm. Didn't you have to eat them at the KGB? In my training, we always got the good stuff. French, Italian, that kind of thing. A regular Matahari. The least you could do is call me Cynthia. Tell me something. How does it feel to spy on your own country? I can't say it feels good, but it's my job. Can't even eat a snake during a mission, huh? I wouldn't mind eating you. When this mission's over, you'll have to treat me to a nice dinner. What do you want to eat? Let's see. How about sushi? Sushi? It's Japanese. I hear it's all the rage right now. Supposedly, it's made from raw fish. Raw fish? Just the place for my survival techniques. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Snake. What a I'll be your eyes from now on. I'm searching and I'm melting to you. <laughs> what a fear in my heart. But you're so supreme. Thank you. Don't worry about it. Are you all right? It's not like I can't see. I've got one good eye and can still fire a gun. Really? Good. Didn't you steal some explosives out of the fortress? C3, a highly potent explosive from the West. It can be molded into any shape, like clay. With just this much, you could blow up the Shagohat and the lab along with it. Is that right? Yeah, but there's a trick to using it. Tell me about it. Well, what do you think? The Shagohod's booster unit uses liquid fuel. The fuel tanks are in the main wing of the weapons lab in the hangar housing the Shagohod itself. So I should blow up the tanks? 
That's the basic idea. It should be enough to blow up the entire hangar. There are four fuel tanks. In order to destroy the hangar, you'll have to set explosives on each of those tanks. All four of them? It should be no sweat for you. Besides, the scientists had the day off today. So the hangar's completely deserted. Not quite. They've still got guards posted there. So what do I do after I set the C3? The bombs run off a timer. Once the timer has been set, the countdown will begin. When the timer reaches zero, the bombs will all go off at once. How long do I have? 20 minutes. Once the phase two trials are finished, I wouldn't be surprised if they kill all the scientists to prevent them from talking. So you've got to act fast. I'll take care of it. Eva, did you get the data on the Shagahod from Sokolov? Yeah, that's the mission I was given. By Khrushchev? Mm-hmm. America doesn't have any use for it, does it? Huh. But I haven't forgotten my other mission, either. Helping you out. <laughs> Follow this cave and go up the ladder at the end. You'll come out inside Groznygrad, just southwest of the weapons lab. Do you remember when you went to rescue Sokolov? Remember there was a locked door when you entered the main wing from the second floor of the east wing? Yeah. That's the entrance to the Shagohad's hangar. Use this key to open that door. The door right when I entered the main wing? Got it. What about you? I'll get things ready for our escape. There's a rail bridge to the north. I'm gonna set a bomb there, so I'm taking half of the C3 with me. Right. I'll set off the weapons lab then. Try not to be in the neighborhood when it happens. Gotcha. And watch out for Ocelot. He suspects you're not who you say you are. Don't worry. The Colonel still trusts me. And I have my ways. There's not a man alive who can resist my charms. Uh, Besides you, of course. I'm just warning you, Eva. That's all. I know. Okay, let's go. You seem like you were born on one of those. <laughs> if I didn't ride every day, I couldn't go on living. Huh? When I'm riding, the wind hits me so hard that it hurts. That pain keeps my mind off the pain of having to be someone else. It's not easy always fooling myself like this. It's only when I'm on the bike that I'm free to be the real me. I only get off my bike when I fall in love or fall dead. What's your name? Tatiana. No, your real name. <laughs> What's wrong with Tanya? Huh. Okay, Tanya. Don't let anyone see you. Huh. Oh, this? It's a button camera. What did you do that for? Insurance. To make sure you don't double-cross me.
You want to say? Snake, have you ever seen the thing? No, don't think so. The corpse of an alien life form is found in the Arctic and taken back to a base. When the corpse thaws out, it comes back to life and starts attacking the scientists and soldiers in the base. Scientists and soldiers, huh? They sure have it rough. The victims in these kinds of movies are usually soldiers or scientists. They get their blood sucked by the alien. If I see any aliens, I'll be sure to keep my distance. <laughs> Knowing you, you'd probably catch it and eat it. I see you caught a markor. The markor is a kind of wild goat that lives in mountainous areas. It's quite large, so I don't think you'll be able to capture one alive, even with the tranquilizer gun. All right. Speaking of which, do you know the origin of the name markor? No. It means snake eater in Persian. Snake eater? Lost your appetite? Not at all. So, how does it taste? It's supposed to be pretty good. All right. Hey, those tanks look like Object 279s. Object 279s? Yep. We don't have a lot of details yet, but apparently they're a kind of heavy tank designed to operate in situations involving the use of tactical nuclear weapons. They're distinguished by two sets of double treads and a disc-shaped shield, which keep it from flipping over in a nuclear blast. Basically, the four treads widen the traction area and increase friction with the ground, while the disc-shaped shield deflects the blast above and below the vehicle. The tank is armed with a 130 millimeter cannon. It's also got a thousand horsepower diesel engine, which gives it a decent top speed. As far as we knew, it hadn't been formally adopted because of the high cost of production, but it looks like we were wrong. Anyway, those don't seem to be ready for deployment yet. You don't need to worry about them going anywhere. Just keep moving. Main wing hangar, huh? Snake, I see you've managed to sneak into the hangar. Yeah, the shag odds in here. The completed Phase II Shagahod represents a grave threat to the West. We can't allow it to be mass-produced. You've got to destroy it. 
Eva's got the data on the Shagohod. Do you think that's safe? Well, I wouldn't exactly say it's safe, but Khrushchev is a shrewd leader. I can't imagine he'd use it for anything other than deterrence. Volgin, however, is a different story. He's planning to use the Shagahod to turn the Cold War into a blazing hot one. We can't let him have it. Agreed. That leaves just one more mission for you to carry out. The boss. Exactly. <sighs> for now, just focus on destroying the Shagahod. Yes, sir. I'll let Sigint fill you in on how to destroy it. Yo! Like Eva was saying, if you're looking to blow the whole place sky high, the best way is to take out those liquid fuel tanks with the C3. You know there's four tanks in there, right? You have to put C3 on all four of them. To plan a C3 charge, all you gotta do is equip the C3 and press the weapon button while standing in front of a tank. Just like TNT. But uh, make sure you don't plant it in the wrong place. You barely got enough C3 as it is, right? Good point. I'll make sure not to plant it anywhere else. Good, man. And be careful. Liquid fuel has a nasty habit of going off at the slightest shot. So don't go using any heavy firepower near the tanks unless you're aiming to get yourself barbecued. I'll keep that in mind. The C3 charges all have to go off at once if you want to bring down the hangar in one fell swoop. So if I were you, I'd wait until after you plant the last charge to start the timer mechanism. All right. I'll make sure I finish planting all four charges before I start the timer. Once the timer's set, you've got 20 minutes until it explodes, right? So make sure you get your ass out of that place by then. I think that's about all I've got. The rest is up to you. Good luck, pal. We're counting on you, Snake. Hey, Snake, have you ever seen Frankenstein? No. The scientist, Dr. Frankenstein, succeeds in creating a human being out of dead body parts. But his creation escapes from the laboratory and heads down to the nearby town. The creature is physically strong, but mentally he's like an innocent child. So his emotions drive him to kill people, and he doesn't even understand what he's doing. The scene where he's playing with flowers with a little girl by the side of a lake sent chills down my spine. A classic tale about the dangers of rapid scientific progress. When human beings become too powerful, they lose their ability to think rationally. Really makes you think, doesn't it? Especially nowadays.
Snake? Eba. I finished planting the bomb on the rail bridge. If we get rid of the bridge, the enemy won't be able to follow us. That should at least buy us some time. I've also set up the escape route. How are things going on your end? I just finished planting the second charge. Give me a little more time. Okay. I'll be waiting for you at the bridge. Got you this time. <laughs> Major, I finished planting the C3. I'm on my way out now. Hurry, Snake. Is Eva taking care of the escape route? Yeah. Are you sure? She can handle it. All right, then. We'll hurry up and get out of there. Why'd you come back? 